Good morning, gathering community and friends. Um, this is Peter. It's uh, Wednesday, March 25th. Um, I guess it's been almost a week now that we've been um, living in social distancing, um, staying at home, uh, sheltering in place is the language we're using quite often now. Um, as we've been um, living this week out ourselves here at home, Betsy and I, um, the sheltering in place has so reminded me of the many backpack trips and bike trips um, that we have taken. Um, in both scenarios, we have always packed up very little, um, lived day to day in the adventure of how far we might go, where we might end up, where we might stay, where we're going to get our next meal from. Um, and in the simplicity, in the adventure of that, um, it was very freeing, actually. Betsy and I would find oftentimes at the end of these trips um, wanting to just stay out there and not come home, but we knew we, had to, we, knew we needed to come back home. It was in those moments um, where we were able to leave um, the world that so consumes our lives, consumes our time, our thoughts, um, that preoccupies our lives in such a way that in many ways it actually pulls us away from God. And um, on each of these moments that we would experience on each of these trips, we were always able to let go. We were able to find rest. And in a lot of those alone times, either pedaling on the bike or walking down a trail in silence, um, I think there was a, a rediscovery of ourselves. We were actually able to take some time and pause and reflect. And every time, and I, and I do mean every time, um, these moments of living in simplicity reminded us of how many times and in how many ways God had always provided for us. We realized how blessed we are, how blessed we've been, and it restored our perspective. As we've been journeying through um, the book of Nehemiah together, uh, we've been titling it Renovation of the Heart, and the journey through that story has been that we've seen God move through the prayerful action of faithful people. Um, everything was provided. Um, there was protection provided. All the resources, all the helping hands um, to rebuild a wall. And the sole purpose of this project was to restore the presence of God in their lives that had been missing for 70 years. Being reminded that for them, the presence of God was literally physical. It was the temple. It was the wall and the secure gates. And it was their life together, their, their rhythm of life together as the people of God that was the presence. So the temple and the wall are now there. And now they finally get to live in communal life together. And as you recall, their first response at the completion of the wall was, to all come to Jerusalem and ask someone to read them God's words. And as they heard God's words, they were greatly humbled. And it says that they even mourned at how they, not, they had not been living the life that God had shown them how to live. And those who were reading and teaching them told them not to weep or mourn, but instead to celebrate this sacred moment. Celebrate this moment of hearing God's words and understanding them. And then they were reminded, they were reminded in that moment that God had commanded through Moses that they should honor with a celebration, a celebration that God had commanded them to do through Moses, and it was called the Festival of Shelters. So families literally built shelters, sheltered in place for a week, and it says they did this with great joy. And the sole purpose of the Festival of Shelters was to remind them of their te temporary nomadic life that they had lived for 40 years in the time of Moses. It was to remind them of how God had not only rescued them from Egypt, but was intimately present in their lives. How God was present in a cloud by day and a fire by night. How God had provided food for them every morning faithfully. This was to be a sacred moment 
a sacred reminder of God's presence. We're sheltered in place. Are we looking at this maybe like the Israelites did, as being sacred? I'm very challenged by that. I, I'm feeling like, for me personally, this is a sacred uh, moment. Um, we're sheltered in place. What if we took this time to reflect on the many ways that God has provided for us in our lives? What if we took this time to actually give thanks for his provision and his presence? Jesus said in Matthew, in chapter 6, these words, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying at a single day, a single hour to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like all of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For unbelievers run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough of its own. As I've been sitting out back uh, by my fire pit having my devotional time in the morning, I'm just struck by the birds, just listening to the birds sing with joy. And then Betsy and I have even found in the evening when we're sitting out back and the sun is going down, those birds are still singing. Many of you know that I keep a journal. And on the men's retreat, one of the speakers gave us some great words to press into. And let me leave these with you. As we are sheltered in place, God's words to us. Rest in me. Trust me. Let go. Believe in me. I am doing something. And keep going. My hope and prayer for you the remainder of this week is that you would be able to maybe look at this moment as being sacred, a gift a chance to, to celebrate where you have seen God at work in your life and put your hope and trust that he is still going to be that God because he is the same that he was yesterday. He's the same today and he will be the same tomorrow. I love you guys. And again, continue to look forward to the day when we get to gather together. Blessings. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you know everything. You know what's going on. You're sovereign all of this. You, you know about all of our needs and you will meet every need. As you've done in the past, you will continue to do that. I pray that you would guard our hearts against uh, fear and worry and concern and over sense of responsibility, that we would surrender all of that to you and that we would have peace and contentment and actually enjoy the season that we're in. And Lord, as we live into our faith and hope in you, this intimate moment that we get to have with you, I pray that our lives would be a light to others who might be struggling around us. Uh, we pray that they would seek after you and find the hope that we have found in you. In Jesus' name, amen.